Hey guys, how's it going? Today we're gonna to be working on several different projects, starting here in the Hartley with setting up our Christmas tree. Here it is. I waited until after Christmas last year to pick up this tree on sale. I'm so excited to set it up. You can see that we already opened the box once. Right when we got it, we decided we should make sure that all the lights work <laughs> before we boxed it up for the entire year. Um, so they did work and it's been just sitting in the loft ready to go. A few of the other things I would like to work on today. My list is kind of long. I've got a bunch of little random things to get done, but I'd like to groom up the artichokes and the cold frames in front of the Hartley. Overall, the plants are looking really nice, but there's a few leaves to tidy up. I've also got the artichoke plants sitting in our greenhouse, still just exposed root balls are just sitting there. They look good, but they need to be potted. I've got a couple of Christmas trees, little ones up in the barn loft. I would like to bring down and pop in the pots in the portico. They have kind of like uh, shimmery lights that twinkle. I think that would be really pretty to have some movement there. I also need to plant that last row of tulips in the cut flower garden still. I haven't got to it. And you guys, night before last, it poured rain for hours. And I thought, oh my goodness, that compost is gonna be everywhere. I didn't pre like pre-wet it down. Um, I was just kind of waiting for a rainy day. But usually when we get rain, it's not like hours and hours of rain. So I thought, oh, that compost is just gonna be everywhere. And it, it's not, it stayed put. So I'm really hopeful for that method. So anyway, let's start with the tree in here and just see how far we get. Now I'm not decorating it today uh, because I want to turn it on. These are interior lights and oftentimes outside they just don't hold up. Like the exterior lights are so much brighter. So we're gonna set it up, plug it in, and then tonight I'm gonna judge whether or not I need to add some exterior lights. Because even though this is an interior space, we see it from every angle outside. So it needs to be bright enough, at least as bright as the trees in the corner of the Hartley that we just got done. So we are gonna need to move this circular plant stand, which has been so nice. You can see I've already moved a few plants to the greenhouse. I brought this plant stand out from inside the house. I think this came from Gardener Supply years ago. I'm gonna pull it out so you can really see it. It's so pretty and I think it will hold. I'm hopeful. I don't know if it'll hold all those. And then we need to find a spot for our grape ivy. And this tree that we've got is a seven footer. And I'm thinking uh, it might be just the right size. I might have to go get a ladder and make our chandelier a little bit higher, like just wire a few of those chains together. Okay, so let's get to reorganizing. I need to vacuum the floor and then the tree can go up. You guys, this tree is perfect. It's the perfect size. I love the structure. I don't remember coming out here and measuring. Maybe I just kind of guessed, 
on the sides, but I am just thrilled. Look at that. And you know, like I said, we'll do the tree skirt and ornaments and I'll tape the cord down just in this section. Uh, when we come out here to decorate it later, once we determine if the lights are bright enough, I do have it plugged in right now, just so we could see. There's a lot of lights on this, so I can't remember the light count, but this one has such a neat color. So it's the Sanibel. I don't know if that's how you say it, Sanibel spruce. It's got kind of a silvery blue green look to it. And I love the structure because one, it's still got some d density, I don't, denseness to it. Um, like you can't see right through it, but it's nice and airy on the edges. So you can come in here and you have the ability to put some bigger stuff in here. And the branches, especially further in where I would be hanging the bigger stuff, they're nice and sturdy. Here's another view. Oh, I love it so much. And it's the perfect width because you still have plenty of room to get around it. And that's the thing with this greenhouse. I've seen some of you guys ask how come we don't have more plants in here or have it set up, you know, with more with greenhouse tables and things like that. Like we have our other greenhouse set up. That's kind of our production greenhouse, if you will. I don't know, that's where I do our seed starting and kind of our messier stuff and I recuperate plants in there. In here, I just wanted to have kind of the plants that looked really nice and I wanted it to be more of a, it's not, not a living space, but it kind of is. You know, we have the table and chairs in here. Uh, we do use it to film videos quite often, especially in the wintertime. So I wanted it to be very spacious and not feel so tight and full of stuff that you couldn't move around freely. And that's what makes me so happy about this Christmas tree. I just, the size is perfect. Just plenty of space to move around. Now, if I would have really been thinking, I would have had, I don't know, can you have plugins put in the ground? You can, can't you? I would have had like a plug-in put in for either a fountain or something like this. But you know, you never know how you're gonna use a space until you actually start using it. The Lonicera fit perfectly right in here. I was able to fit six of them on the plant stand and then two of them can just hang out. I'm so thankful for how deep these ledges are because I've got like, there's an amaryllis over there. There's a rosemary in the corner. On this side, we've got a bunch of cactus sitting on the ledge. It just gives you extra space. The grape ivy is gonna chill in here for a while. I just uh, fertilized that and gave it a little bit of a bath. It was pretty dusty. You know, when Pedro and his crew put in the rock stone pathway in front of the Hartley, they had to do a lot of cutting. Uh, so there was just white powder on everything. And we have since cleaned the greenhouse, but not everything like that plant still had a bunch of white rock dust on it. And let's not forget the red geraniums. They're so pretty. This is exactly why I wanted them in here red blooms at Christmas time. One last thing, I thought I would just show you this little arrangement we made not too long ago. It's looking really nice and it's such a peaceful, beautiful spot right over here. Okay, next project are the artichokes in the cold frames. See, they're looking pretty good, but there are a few, you know, leaves that are hanging out that are a little bit damaged. This won't take very long, but I think it'll make things look a lot better. Here comes Douglas. I'm kind of stunned with how well these did. They were so little when I planted them and it was so late. <laughs> and it gets so incredibly hot up here because you know these cold frames are on the south side of this greenhouse. So they, they get all the sun and they soak in a lot of heat. And even though we have the lids open, they're still semi-closed. Like it's not a completely open structure or open space rather from all sides. So I'm really thrilled. You look thrilled. Are you thrilled? Okay, I'm gonna go grab a pop-up bag and a pruning saw. That's what I'm gonna use because I kinda wanna get down in there and whack those leaves off. I think the pruning saw will make quick work of it. Oh geez, that's what's looking at us next. Oh, look at the Christmas tree inside there. Oh, it's so fun. So I'm thinking I can just reach down in here because see how far down we gotta go? Man, they look so good, so healthy. And we can just I'll be easier with two hands, but. Just like that. I think this will only take a few minutes.
And there we go. It's amazing how such a little job like that can really make things look better. I mean, just spending a few minutes. I've been meaning to do it for a few weeks now. And I could have just got it done and enjoyed looking at them so much more for so much longer. But anyway, I'm very happy with how they look. So there's these on this side. They just have such big, thick stalks. And there's cheddar basking in the sun. And this side. So this one is on the east. I don't know if that one maybe gets a little shade in the afternoon, possibly, from the trees. These are a little bit more robust, a little bit bigger. Kind of interesting. Look at that. These didn't produce any artichokes this year, but we'll see if they overwinter in the cold frames. They should, I'm guessing. The ones out on the new property that we planted out in the dirt lands, uh, those did produce a few. We didn't have a tremendous amount. I just got to planting them so, so late. But it's amazing how big they grow in just one season from seed. We started these from seed this year. I think it was maybe sometime toward the end of January. And there's our beautiful tree right there in the center. I just love it. And I honestly, like, I'm going to decorate it, but I like trees just with their lights on, with no ornaments. They just look so cozy and warm and it's such an easy thing. I don't know, I feel very uh, relaxed about this year's holiday decorations. Uh, it's really nice. I do have our inside trees done, um, but I didn't mess with any toppers or any ribbon and I actually like the look a little bit better. It's just very, very peaceful. Okay, I think everything's good in here. So now I think I wanna head out and get the tulip job done. Okay, here we are. You can see the first three rows that we got done and the compost looks amazing even with all the rain, oh, it makes me so happy. So we are going to be planting in this row right here. You can see the rest of this space has been cleared. We have a little bit more to clean up in that quadrant there. And then I'll come through and clean up the roses. Uh, I don't know if I'll do it now or I'll wait till maybe February-ish. I love when it's full of flowers, but part of me loves it when it's all slicked up and tidy too. There's a season for everything. Here's what we've got. I did go through all these varieties when we planted our first three rows over there. So we've got the double tulips. That's what we'll be focusing on. They usually are later bloomers. Some are mid to late, like this one's a wedding gift. We've got Averon's, Finola, Morris Goudinoff, Mount Tacoma, Akebano, and Rosy Diamond. If we have space at the end of the row, I do have some Blushing Ladies and uh, Johan Cruyffs. And I've got 125 of each one of these doubles, but I'm able to plant them fairly close together. So it's likely that I'll be using some of those others at the end of the row. The rows are 60 feet long and we are fitting four individual rows in each one of these runs of drip tape. So one row on either side of one run of drip tape. And these have emitter holes every six inches. I'm gonna straighten this out before I make my little furrows. So what we're doing here is kind of an experiment. And since we have done this, I have heard several other people have planted them this way with really good success. So I'm just making a little trench with my tool here and just enough to nest the bulb down in and then we're coming along with compost and just burying them so it's essentially like putting them in a in a raised bed sort of situation sort of um, it's definitely it's less work than digging out the area and we add a lot of compost to our space anyway so we figured that it might save us a little bit of time and if it works awesome okay so let's get this done
right, they're all in the ground. Haven't covered them up yet. I want to show you what they look like kind of in their rows before we cover them. Uh, they are all doubles. I actually have 29 extra tulip bulbs I'll plant out in a flower bed. And then I've got all of the Blushing Lady and Johan Cruyff bulbs left. And here it is. Nice big white identification markers. You can really see them. They show up nicely. And you can see all of the bulbs just lined up. I've got them roughly three inches on average apart from one another. I think the recommended spacing in a flower bed's four, uh, four to six. So anyway, in this situation, since we're growing them for cutting and we don't need the, to let the plants get big and mature, you know, uh, we don't have to put them quite as far apart. Something satisfying about seeing them all lined up, isn't it? Okay, we're gonna get these covered and then run up to the barn loft and get those trees down for the pots. Oh my goodness, you guys, I love the scale of these, the size, it's perfect for these pots. Hey, Russell, just absolutely perfect. And the fact that there's some movement in the lights, you know, that little bit of a sparkle, I think that will make them really show up, even if we have our carriage lights on. I do intend on doing garland around the door, and I think I'll do these two window boxes and maybe the kitchen window box, but not all of the window boxes, uh, but that will really help kind of dress it up, and I'll add more lights to those. And at that point, we could probably turn off all the carriage lights and just have the Christmas lights here. And I am so thankful that all the lights worked. I mean, I don't know if these kind of sparkly lights are common. Like, can you buy those? Either way, if you can or can't, it's still a pain to have to take the lights off the tree and restring it. So I'm thankful. Whatever I did when I was um, kind of manipulating the branches, it kind of kicked some of them on. So I don't know. Well, Hope for the best. These trees, my sister-in-law picked up for me at a yard sale uh, the first year we moved into this house. She knew that we needed a lot more Christmas decor than I had uh, from our last house in order to fill up, you know, all the doorways and things like that. And I still feel like I don't have 
quite enough to fill up every single doorway. So I usually choose one that I want to decorate fully and then I just do very simple things on the other doorways. Uh, but she picked these up for $15 for the pair of them at a yard sale. Six years, was that six years ago? And these are the lights that they came with and they're still working. Okay guys, last thing that I really wanna get done today is the artichokes in the greenhouse. I wanna get those potted up as soon as that's done. The dahlias are pretty much all packed. I think there might be one little section that we still need to go in the root cellar, uh, but then we can get in there and really do some organizing and set up for this winter. He asked you guys, I forgot to mention, this area is fairly protected from the wind. It's on the east side of our house. Winds usually come from the west. But I did run a garden stake down the back side of the tree into the soil in the pot. If you look in here, you can see it right there. Because the tree itself only went down into the soil about six, eight inches. And that's just not enough. You know, if it caught a breeze up here, it would easily topple out of the pot. So that garden stake goes all the way to the bottom of this pot and will help hold it up. All right, guys, here we are in the greenhouse. Things are looking a little bit more tidy. All the dahlias have been packed and put in the root cellar, so those have all been cleaned up. Uh, the artichokes are right here. And if we get in here close, you can see they were just dug out of the ground and popped right in my potting tray, and that's where we've been watering them <laughs> this whole time. Like for a few weeks, they've been sitting in here. Uh, so we've got four in the potting tray, and one in this tub that I'd like to get potted. And I actually don't have very many spare plastic containers left. Uh, we give a lot of those away. So I did scrounge these out of the barn. I'm hoping we can fit them in, I'm not sure. I mean, I think an artichoke plant would look beautiful in like a large terracotta or concrete container, but I don't know if I, <laughs> I don't know if I wanna lug that around. And usually if it's an experiment, like trying to winter something over in the greenhouse, I don't wanna commit to a really pretty pot until I know it's gonna thrive. So let's see if these work. Okay, here they are, all potted up, and four out of the five fit really easily into the containers. The very last one was a little bit tight, but that's the largest container, plastic container I have on hand. I think it'll be okay for now. And I put them in a sunny spot, watered them in. We should be good, I think. I used a mix of land and sea compost and the organic potting soil, so there's some good food in there. Um, so I won't add any other, you know, garden tone or any other kind of fertilizer until probably early spring. These are a 120 day maturity, so you really do need a long growing season. Uh, and we can't usually set ours out until later. You know, some websites say that these are hardy to zone six. Some websites say hardy to zone seven. Either way, I 
I've never had a real good time or an easy time wintering them over. They don't usually come back for us. Um, so that's telling right there. Uh, technically, we are in a zone seven based on the new USDA, right, USDA zone chart. I have a hard time even planting like we're a zone six still because we were a zone five for so long. And you know, I'm not even the biggest fan of eating artichokes. I mean, I, I like them fine, but I like to grow more for their foliage. I think they're so, so neat such a neat texture in the garden. So I would love to tuck these into a flower bed if they do well in here over the winter. And this variety right here, if it's living in a zone where it will winter over um, consistently, they usually are productive, this variety, for at least five-ish years. So we'll see how it goes. And you guys, that is it for today. I did do a little tidy up in here, but I wanna come through and you know groom everything, fertilize everything, uh, because we are keeping it at 55, well, right now it's higher than 55 in here, but it doesn't dip below that at night. Right now in here, it's 73. It's so nice. But I want to come through and just kind of tend to some of the things in here. I need to groom up our green stock. I brought some seeds home uh, to plant in it. We do have some strawberries and tomatoes producing in here still, which is amazing. Uh, so anyway, I feel like if we're going to leave this sort of thing in here over the winter, uh, we'll probably need to give it a little bit of food because I haven't fed this in a while. And we've got some gorgeous geraniums. These are the ones that we dug out of the chicken coop flower bed area. So there's this pot, well, these three, and these two right here. And these are some of the ones we started from seed last winter. I got the seeds from Swallowtail. And I think, are these the Maverick light pink? I can't remember, apple blossom. They don't look light enough to be apple blossom. I don't know, they're pretty. And then we have the containers that I planted up really early in the spring and they've sat here the entire year. There's a calla in there, a hookara, diamond snow euphorbia that's just absolutely loaded with color and a begonia, which I just groomed it and that's what made the hole right here. I just had stuff so jammed together that I couldn't really see what was going on. Anyway, it's fun to see that though. And this is the other one I planted up really early. There's a hookara, a hellebore, which is pushing brand new fresh leaves. There's an acris I need to groom. That's, see, this is what I'm talking about. I need to come in here and clean stuff up. Um, there's a heather and a dianthus. There's just a lot of fun things going on here and there. And the citrus is loaded too. Gotta show you that before we leave. Look at this lemon. Holy moly. It is just loaded up with lemons. I love it. This one too. This one, not so much. It's pushing a ton of new growth though. This is a variegated lemon. And then the kumquat, uh, it got a little too cold in here one night and that one got a little bit more affected than the others, but there's a ton of fruit on it. Anyway, guys, that is gonna do it for today. I'm really happy with the amount of just little things, those little random things um, that are on your list. I can check a lot of them off now. Uh, it feels good. And then we will be back at it with the Hartley tree probably in the next day or two after we decide the light situation, if we need more or not. So anyway, thank you guys so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it and we will see you in the next one. Bye.